are like, we got to get back to there, you know? And, and in some ways, the sport's better now, in some ways. In some ways, it's not. But you guys were part of an era, I think, not the 80s and not the 2000s, you know what I mean? The, the, the 90s is when people Well, it all changed it. when yeah. Carmichael came along, really. It just, yeah. It, the, everything changed, yeah. really. Jeremy, Jeremy, I always think that, you know, Jeremy's like, okay, hey, we're just going to whole shot, be perfect for five laps. You'll be able to see. Yeah. Your, you'll, you'll be at one turn. He'll be at the other. You'll be able to monitor the whole rest of the race. And then Ricky came along and goes, uh, you better have yeah. to do that for 15. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Because right? I'm exactly. going to train my ass off. I'm well, not going to give you five. You're going to have to do it for 10 or maybe 12. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? But to be fair, it took him three years to get to that point. Yeah. And, that, and so, again, yeah. no, and nobody knew how close you two were. Yeah, ever. yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, you know, true. that was really interesting yeah. about yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I even go back to, like, uh, you know, they talk about, you know, the number seven. Um, Stewart. I mean, Stewart is, well, for sure was unbelievably fast, but it's like Stewart's going to run with Carmichael for 20 minutes. It's the, ne it's the last 10 that he's going to have a problem with, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. And, and that was the case. I mean, because yeah. Ricky was fit. He was, yeah. you know, I mean, you know, you were on your way out. Right. He's I, a, he's a, I mean, I don't Ricky's want to... like 10 years younger than me, so it's, exactly. it's a whole new era. E exactly. So, so, I mean, he actually... I'm stoked I lasted three years with him coming along, right? <laughs> Absolutely. He should have taken it, it, over. It, yeah, it was going to happen. I mean, yes. how, how pissed were they when I came in the first year and won as a rookie? Yeah. yeah. You know, the, the Stanton, it put Stanton in retirement. Bradshaw. Bradshaw yeah. in retirement yeah. twice. Yeah. <laughs> he came twice. <laughs> you know, JMB went home back yeah. to France. <laughs> like, I mean, when I came in, yeah. like, as weirdly as it is, like, guys just had to stop. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. 72. But, I don't know if that can be beat, Doug. I don't know. It's, I don't I think mean, so. You never know. And, well, I mean, yeah, I don't think it'll ever be beat, dude. <laughs> yeah. I really don't. Here, here's, here's, here's my, my I don't, People have been arguing with me about this jet thing. I go, the fucker hasn't even won one fucking Supercross race. Yeah. And you guys are talking about him taking over. I'm like, <laughs> Get yeah. the fuck out of here, dude. <laughs> uh, yeah. your, I like your answer, yeah. Balut. I love Balut's that. your PR guy. And I, say, but I, I say that, too. Ain't. Because I, I have complete, yeah. unbelievable respect for this guy <laughs> yeah. for different reasons. But Listen, that's, that's, that's a big number, dude. That's why, that's Ricky, a big that's why Ricky and I didn't talk for 10 years because of this guy. Because <laughs> I said you can't call yourself the GOAT. You yeah. can't. Because oh, yeah, yeah. I said you're, if you were close to him in Supercross... And then you have all these outdoor wins. That's Fine. what it was, Steve. You're the goat. Yeah. Yeah. But I was yeah. saying, you're 25 back. Like you're, a, you're a lot behind. You can't be the goat. And then that was, you know, that was the start of it. But we're good now. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not gonna start it well, again. But, yeah. but, but <laughs> no. that's one of the things that Ricky was like, you know, fuck Mathis. And uh, yeah. I'm like, it's I'm, only a nickname. I, no, you know, yeah, that, I, I just, it's interesting. Exactly. So, so exactly. I, I go back to when you know he'd get on the motorcycle and it'd be like, hey, if if if, if you can give me this. I can do that, and it was always up the chain, yeah. you know. And, and now, now it's different. I think I think James changed it, Villapoto changed it to where when we'd go testing, Jeremy had this is where he tested, and he would race here, and he he knew For what sure. that gap was. So we, the risk, the risk was a lot. I want I, in today's world, going back and look at it, he didn't put himself at risk in a test session very rarely. Because he was here, and I know that I can go here with this. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think nowadays, you know, I think James, if he came up now, God, who knows how good he could be. Because all of a sudden, James came in and was like, I'm going to go race pace every time yeah. I'm on the track. How do you develop a motorcycle around? When the four-stroke came out of Cowie, yeah. we're like, I, we hired Phil Lawrence. I, Phil, I need you to break this motorcycle. Because until we broke it, we didn't know where it limitation was. You couldn't risk James putting him yeah. on the bike. Yeah. You know, now with all the data and everything that you have now, I think if he came along now, who knows how good that guy. I he don't know. Just, I feel like he still was just one speed. I'm just, I'm going wide no, open. But, but, yeah. but, but still, but what I'm saying yeah. is, is that I felt like a Cali, when I was there, a Cali, when he came along, we yeah. weren't ready for him. Yeah, yeah. We were behind we couldn't, we couldn't keep up because we, we were scared yeah. to give him anything yeah, Stern to get him hurt. Sternstrom tells a story of James being like pissed that his bike wasn't handling fourth gear wide open in the whoops. And Sternstrom's <laughs> like, you can't do that. <laughs> You're going to skip a whoop and die. Like, yeah. stop and he, it. He, you know? he did it all with his hand on the <laughs> bar. No, no fingers <laughs> on the clutch. Yeah. He would ride the whoops like this. Yeah. And, yeah. and when, like, when, yeah. when James came along, it reminded <clears> me a lot when we, in 94, Supercross was the number one priority for Honda, uh, Honda Japan. And we got data acquisition. We got all this stuff. And it was like, hey, what gear are you in when you hit the triple? We, 
Now we know. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And he knew everything. He was a dyno. Right. So that's where I got my understanding of how important it is to know your motorcycle. Right. And then when James came along, we had all these, we had four different characters of motorcycle, right? You have guys that'll come out now and they'll go, oh, I don't, I don't, I can't ride it because it's not where I ride it. And you know, well, yeah. this is the motorcycle. You need, should adapt to it or try to adapt yeah. to it. James, by the time the first lap was around, he figured out and rode it where it made power in a lap, yeah. which was just, we never, we never were able to track that before. But yeah. going back on it, a little bit, I go, well, shit, he was just like that. Jeremy was, he knew exactly what he wanted and where he was at. Uh, and that's, I think a lot of times it's, it's a little bit lost. And I think you got some guys now that are coming through that maybe are better at understanding that than they were before, because you talk about controlling everything with your laptop now. Yeah. That's where your advantages come from. I mean, all you have to understand is what you actually need, right? My, what I need is different than what you guys yeah. need, right? Well, and I think Jet's got a good handle on that. If I, if I had a dollar for every time I heard about setup on a bike after a race, I, I, I'd be 